Don, Ma Don Mongoose, holy shit, thanks so much for the 10 gifted. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, we unlocked a new right, the right of rebirth. That gives us a blessed spawn unit for the defenders. Okay, that's good to know. Hi, Queen Jean. Thanks so much for gifting us up to uh, Fireball. Fireball. Ooh, Beastman. You are not part of the great plan. The Kai smash. <laughs> Thank you, Don Mongoose. Thank you very, very much. All right, ads over. What was I talking about? I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> what was I discussing? Uh, Holocaust, thanks sexy. for the 100 biddies, dude. I'm your first ever sub? Oh, I, I'm your first? Oh, that's, that's sweet. <laughs> I'll try and make it special for you. Do I think we'll get a croc score hero in the future? We better. We better. Corn and honor, thank you. So, corn, yeah, corn does not care about honor. Corn only cares that blood is flowing. If you are massacring your way through pathetic peasants who are completely unable to defend themselves, women and children, but the streets are flowing with blood, corn is pleased. If you are murdering your way through cripples and old men and women, and like you're just tearing everyone apart, that's uh, that's that's all they care about. I actually like Nakai's Lord mechanic. Don't hate me. Um, like, I actually really like that Nakai is more about establishing, like, a network of bases that just make him stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, like, I don't know. He's he's kind of he's kind of almost like the new Warriors of Chaos more than he's like the Beastmen and that he's more about establishing a vassal and just making it as strong as possible. I do want them. I do want Nakai to get further changes. Like, I would very, very much like for Nakai's vassal to have more agency, but, you know, the current Band-Aid we have on Nakai is a notable improvement. But anyway, um, as far as Korn is concerned, though, like, does Korn care about honor in the sense of, like, don't backstab? No. Korn is totally fine with those of his servants that are, like, horrifying matted monsters that have no concept of loyalty or honor and just tear into anything and everything around them um like they're just in battle and they're like oh, 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 and they lose it and just start attacking their friends and allies corn doesn't care um but that is a massive violation of honor um like if what corn hates is corn hates what so Korn is kind of, you have to remember that the, the Dark Gods are not fully sane, right? The Dark Gods are emotional concepts that have grown so large within the realm of chaos that they gain sentience. They are not a person that believed in certain values that achieved godhood. They are significantly less um, all there than that. So like you may say to yourself, well, if I was corn, I would care about X, Y, Z, but you're not corn. Corn only cares genuinely about one thing, which is magic. Corn believes that people who use magic in battle in order to like, um, in order to augment their own capabilities, he believes that is like cheating. Essentially it's cowardly. Um, and he views that he views those sorts of sorceries as cowardice and uh, thinks that those people should essentially be punished. However, one thing that's worth pointing out and is what kind of makes Korn more interesting is that you could argue that Korn is a complete hypocrite. Um, and that if 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 Korn truly hated magic, if Korn is truly against the idea of using sorcery in any and all forms, why is Korn then okay with like people using magic weapons? Or if Korn is so against like magic being used in order to augment people, yet he bestows mutations through magic in order to buff his followers in order to make them uh, gain uh, mutations that are more powerful, including type magical type ones like 
bodies that are covered in flame or armor that magically adjusts to fit their forms. Like the thing about Korn is that like all of the dark gods, he's a magic, he's a huge hypocrite. Like Korn is not a noble, um, honorable, courageous god of battle. He is a bloodthirsty, cruel, um, sadistic bastard god that only cares about um, people constantly being enraged, people constantly suffering, and ensuring that the world is engaged in battle that never ends. That's all Korn cares about deeply. That being said, um, within his contradictions, there is a type of savage nobility um, among Kornates compared to the other dark gods. You know, Zinch enjoys engaging in all these like crazy schemes and uses terrifying magics to flip reality on its head. And if you're gonna fight against the forces of Zinch, you need to be incredibly careful because you're gonna be fighting against a very duplicitous entity uh, who will do everything in his power to constantly mess with you and your perceptions. Korn is probably is gonna be far less interested in that. When you're dealing with the followers of Korn, you are far more likely to get a fair fight. Uh, and you're far more likely to be facing against an entity who you can challenge to a fair battle and you might not get it, but you at least have a chance. And there are those who worship Korn. Um, there are those among the Kornites who do worship Korn as a god of courage and a god of honor. And I think that's where a lot of people get mixed up is a lot of people learn about certain worshipers of Korn and they like read or they read army books about certain warriors of chaos and they say, oh, well, Valkia is like pretty honorable. Like Valkia engages in duels and Valkia hates cowardice. And she like gets so angry at people that flee from battle that she literally points them out to Korn and Korn like shoots laser beams at them and kills them. Um, that that is still the exact same god as the god who is totally cool with um, some asshole who loses it to anger and murders his family even though his family didn't stand a chance um, but like corn could be worshipped in many different ways so there are warriors of corn who are out there that worship corn as a warrior god and these warriors of corn do very strongly believe in honor they very much believe in not stabbing someone in the back and saluting their opponent before they face them in honorable combat. Um, you know, they're almost like a twisted sort of Bretonian. Um, they have a sense of honor. Now, does their God enforce that on them? No, he doesn't. They might think he does uh, because their shaman tells them that, or that's how they believe Korn uh, manifests himself. But there are also tribes out there that uh, in Norska that worship Korn as the bloody hound. And they understand Korn as a wild, ruthless beast who only cares about berserker rage and blood bloodlust and anything else is just extra. Is Kane Korn? No, there are some very notable differences between Kane and Korn. Kane cares way more about style than Korn does. Um, if you kill Messily in Kane's name, um, a lot, Kane is significantly less impressed. Um, Kane cares far more about murder and like stylistic murder than he tends to about just pure bloodlust, which is why the most like Argent followers of Kane, uh, although they tend to revel very heavily in bloodshed, they also revel very he heavily in specific types of bloodshed. It's not good enough for them just to slay or just to spill blood for the sake of spilling blood. There, there's a there's a beauty to it. There's there's an art to it about decapitating as cleanly as possible. In the case of Argoneth executioners, you know, executing someone with a a single decapitation. Uh, witch elves uh, tend to specialize uh, more heavily in like bleeding you in these dancing displays and making sure to make you bleed as much as possible before you die. Um, so like there, there, are, uh, there are differences between the two and they're very, very big rivals. 
Now, you is there's definitely like a lot of philosophical arguments within the Warhammer Fantasy universe, within the universe itself, of scholars saying, like there are scholars in the Empire who say that, oh, the elves think they're so mighty and high and all this other bullshit, but they're merely worshiping corn in another form. Like obviously, Cain is corn, obviously. Like look at them, they're the exact same. Uh, to which, you know, an elf would probably decapitate them for saying that. Or, uh, it, um, like, or a dark elf would be like, let me show you the difference. And by show you, they mean I'm about to chop you into itty bitty pieces. Prepare yourself. Whereas a high elf might say something more like, um, I, I, I understand how you think that, but let me, let me explain to you how close minded that view is. Um, and then they like sink into a philosophical debate. Um, but there's like a lot of uh, discussion in the Warhammer world about that. Who's the handsome Godzilla? Uh, clearly, Pico, you're talking about yourself, which, you know, some people would maybe see that as vain, but I appreciate how gorgeous you are. So like, you know, slay it. Man, one cheered. X100. I have never this seen is a little buggy. Corn in the same room together. Obviously the same guy. Oh no, I just have enough. I have enough points. Wow, these are actually really cheap. Um, I don't really, I'm, I'm saving up though. I really want to get Slon of Distinction as fast as I can. You've never seen them in the same room together? I mean, that's, that's a fair counterpoint. That is a fair, okay. We are saving up to get this, which is 8K. Hello there, by the way, if you're new here, uh, we've had like more people coming in. Hi, I'm Loremaster of Sotek. I'm considered one of the kind of the premier authorities on Warhammer Fantasy literature, and I love just talking about the lore. Um, I play the tabletop game. I play the Age of Sigmar tabletop game. I read all the books for Warhammer Fantasy and uh, most of the books for AOS. Uh, I also, shut up advisor. Uh, I also uh, have been a part of the hobby for a really long time. Uh, I play the tabletop games. Uh, I played the board games like Chaos in the Old World. Uh, I play the RPG systems, um, which I'm a huge fan of. And uh, yeah, I just kind of love everything Warhammer Fantasy. Nakai has money now? Dude, Nakai makes bank now. His economy is purely generated by his vassals, but he makes a hilarious amount of money from his vassals. Oh, thank you for the walk. Was Archeon ever defeated in Warhammer? Um, he was defeated. So in the current timeline we're in, because there are some alternate universes, but in the current timeline we're in, there have been some, or uh, Nakai has lost uh, before he fully ascended, um, which is that he was ultimately defeated once by Bellacor, the Dark Master, who is also his father. Um, Bellacor beat the shit out of him once. Um, but that was before. Oh, we got the ambush. Oh, chat. Can we spam lurks in chat? So lurk. So lurk. So lurk. We're lurking in that swamp. We're right. We're, we're like, get him. Get him. Get him. They're about to get crocked, chat. Is Nakai finally fun? Yes, Nakai is very fun. He gets absolutely hilariously overpowered. But uh, yeah, Archeon lost once before he had gotten all of the artifacts uh, to uh, Bellacor and Bellacor beat the shit out of him and then let him go because Bellacor was planning on possessing him and didn't want to kill him. Um, and then, uh, thank you chat. And then beyond that, there was also, uh, he loses to Sigmar at the very, very last second in the end times. Uh, but those are the only two people who ever defeated Archeon. That being said, Archeon has definitely uh, been hurt very badly by a number of characters. Um, he actually had one of his magic items, the Eye of Shirian, destroyed by Grimgor Ironhide when they dueled, which was a really, really powerful moment in that big battle between the two of them. And Archeon literally had to go like full Super Saiyan, essentially, to finally take down Grimgor. Like he literally had to use every single trick he had in the book and unleash the Slayer of Kings in its full power to even to bring down Grimgor. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but um, outside of that, there's... Uh, uh, but no, Archeon, Archeon's pretty tough cookie. Cathayans, man. They wandered into gator country. Yeehaw! 
All right, let's get some gators. Or no, let's get some. Time, time to, it's time to gorge ourselves on some Chinese food, chat. All right. Gang, make yourself useful. When Florida comes to you, yeah. Yeah, Nakai is just Florida man in his fully evolved form. Oh, that is a lot of spears, though. Even though they're all peasants, they still have spears. Thank you for the sip. Blowpipes, let's move down the line, please. Down the line. Oh, she's getting away. Fear the crocodile Dundee. That's not a mace. This is a mace. All right, skinks, it's melee mode time. Let's go. Why'd you stop? Charge. Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100. Nakai is a Florida man who accidentally woke up drunk in southern China after a raucous vacation in Thailand, and now he's making it everyone's problem. Nah, dude, haven't y'all seen, haven't y'all ever seen a Spider-Man movie? Nakai obviously is a Florida man who fell into a vat of gators. That's not a Cathayan general that's Tretch in disguise. Oh, well, now we really got to make sure she gets smashed. Akai, smash! Dead? Ah, she's getting up. Kill her! Turn radius. You dead now? Oh my god, the knockback is too real. You dead now? Your head's missing. Oh no, I found it. Oh wait, no, that's just... Alright, I think she's dead. I can't, I can't be sure. She might get up later, but... Dark Strategos, thank you so much for the, uh, the three months. Janto Z, thank you very much for the tier one. Welcome to the Red Host and XX Rathlos. Thanks for the 11 months of Prime. All right, let's mop up. Kataroks yeah. beat Nakai. That, that would be a battle of titans. I honestly would really struggle to call a winner on that. Can you tell a story about how man's killing like, Nakai is definitely tenacious enough that he could handle a lot of punishment from Tarux. Uh, but Tarux is also a much more skilled fighter than he is. So, like, theoretically could avoid letting Nakai hit his weak spot. It's tough. It's tough. The Entropy, thanks so much for the 10 gifted. Thank you. Thank you to all you guys that are gifting subs. I always really appreciate when y'all uh, unleash a new spawning of the Red Host upon us. It's always glorious to see more uh, more lizard men awakening from the sacred spotting pools. Is there a new timeline after the end times? Actually, the other way around. There was a timeline before the end times. The original version of the end times was called the Storm of Chaos. And in the Storm of Chaos, it was basically the end times, except for at the, the 11th hour, um, Archeon loses. Um, Archeon is actually defeated by Grimgore Ironhide 
and uh once grimgore defeats archaon grimgore basically like runs off because he's too busy hooting and hollering about he how he's the greatest and when grimgore leaves there's still a gigantic army of chaos uh but manfred von karstein shows up and manfred actually defeats the forces of chaos and saves the world um and uh then uh manfred gets scared off by volkmar uh, and basically regroups to Sylvania, declaring that Sylvania has fully seceded from the Empire. And uh, that basically started us off into 7th edition. And 7th edition picks up after the Storm of Chaos and is basically like, well, what now? You know, the forces of Chaos were defeated, but a lot of the Empire was crippled. Um, like the Northern Empire was totally massacred uh, and is struggling to recover. The vampire counts are back. And like, that's a whole bunch of crazy shit. Grimgore Ironhide is undefeated and is now heading back east. Um, like the world was in a really interesting place. And then in eighth edition, they retconned the universe back to before the Storm of Chaos and made us do it again. But this time it was called the End Times and ultimately Chaos destroys the world. What's my favorite lore fact slash story about Colex Sun Eater? Um, I mean, my favorite, my favorite, Colex Sun Eater moment is probably most people's favorite Colex Sun Eater moment, which is when he achieved like full fame, which is when he arrived in for the Battle of Prague during the Great War Against Chaos, because the city of Prague uh, was actually doing a very, very, very good job of holding back the forces of chaos, despite Azavar Cool, like endless hordes, which for those unaware, Azavar Cool was the ever chosen before the current one. Um, so Azvar Kool was the 12th ever chosen, Arcan was the 13th. And Azvar Kool, this was like 200 years ago, uh, Azvar Kool um, led Peasant. the... Uh, he led the forces of Chaos uh, against Kislev, and at the city of Prague is kind of where all of his forces kind of coalesced uh, to face off against them. And ultimately, um, the city was holding out, barely, uh, even though they were having to face a lot of new horrific like war engines and all this other crazy Master, shit the uh, because they were having to deal with uh, insanity like the, uh, the chaos dwarfs appearing for the first time in ages and the chaos dwarfs had unveiled their newest creations called the hell cannons so the hell cannons were being utilized for the first time so no one had ever seen chaos utilizing supercharged demon engines and now there were a bunch of them entire batteries of them um and even then, Prague was still barely managing to hold out because a lot of um, extra defenders had rallied to them. But ultimately, Colex Sun Eater shows up. And when Colex Sun Eater shows up, it was literally that scene from Attack on Titan where, like, he, like, his head is seen above the walls and everyone's like, oh my god. And he raises up Star Crusher and he smashes the wall with a single hit and basically blows open part of the wall and Kolek Sun Eater forces his way inside and the hordes of chaos come pouring in after him. And the city of Prague was completely doomed at that point. Um, Kolek would go on to ravage the temple district because Kolek Sun Eater apparently gets really pissed off by seeing uh, what, he call, what he sees as lesser fake, like lesser gods uh, because Kolek considers himself a god uh, and he is worshiped as a god by many people, uh, many tribes. So he basically, forces his way into the temple district and smashes down all the temples of all of the gods of the southern weak southern realms and then from there he uh he uh he goes back north because asvar cool i'm sure would have liked to command him to continue south uh, to help him at the battle of the gates of kislev where asvar cool is ultimately defeated but nakai or uh um kolek doesn't did not consider himself to owe any fealty uh, to the Ever Chosen. So when the Ever Chosen is like, we're moving south, Kolek says, nope, I've done my part. I have satisfied my bloodlust for now. I'm going home. Uh, and he marched back north, uh, much to the chagrin of uh, Asvar Kool, I'm sure. Does Total War do a good job showcasing Kolek's size? I mean, he is one of the largest entities in the game. Um, obviously, the Dread Saurian is bigger than him. Could, should... Uh, 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 okay, I'm going to say, 
Could, if you wanted to do like purely lore accurate, should Colex Sun Eater be probably a fair bit larger? Tell us a story of yes. Loss on um, however, could you have done should Colex be larger is a different question. Um, I've I've listened to kind of the devs debate this from time to time on the few occasions where I'm able to dis uh, discuss it with them. And like, it's kind of a tricky issue because a lot of people want Colex Sun Eater to be bigger just cause they're like, hey, in the lore, he's like fucking gigantic. So he should be fucking gigantic. And like, he is fucking gigantic to be fair. Um, but um, if Colex was as big as he is supposed to be, his balance would be like completely out of whack, which I do think is an issue worth thinking about. Like Colex Sun Eater, if you make him that large, he, he he's gonna have a lot of problems in game. Like he's not gonna function at all, basically. Uh, because kind of his major issue would be that like, if anybody showed up with any missile units whatsoever, he would just it, like get deleted off the game. Um, like he would, he would just instantly die. Um, and like, the walls in this game also for like the average city are hilariously massive. Um, I, I just, I, I think it's best for, I, I do think it like Kolek is a good size right now because like he's bigger than like almost anything else. Um, uh, you know, maybe, I, I do think maybe it'd be worth increasing his size by a few percentage points. I don't think having him be Dread Saurian size would be a great move. Um, because if he's Dread Saurian sized, I think he would really struggle to be like playable um, and like good. Um, maybe increasing his size by, I don't know, like another 10 to 30% would be really good. But like right now, I mean, he's bigger than any other Dragon Ogre and the Dragon Ogres are not that large, but you know, but he cannot, he cannot be bigger than a Dread Saurian. Um, like CA has talked about that the Dread Saurian is literally as big as they can make a monster. There literally could never be a monster bigger than um, a Dread Saurian because the Dread Saurian is the biggest that they can fit through a gate. Um, if you make an, a monster any larger, it would have to have major clipping to order in order to fit through gates, which I don't think would be great. I think that would look really bad. That being said, like, I would not be against Colex Sun Eater being made larger. I just understand that it is an issue. It's just kind of one of those things where, like, I think the community as a whole kind of needs to come together and have, like, a cohesive decision about, like, would we rather Colex be as big as he can be and just, like, to hell with the issues that's going to cause? Like, just do it. Or is it, like, okay, no, we do want Colex to actually, like, function and be better. Uh, in which case, like, maybe he does not need to be quite that large. He's also probably gonna need, uh, he's also probably gonna need new animations if they make him larger. But like, I'll tell you, personally, I am on team make him bigger. I'm gonna be honest. I am, I am on team make him bigger. Um, I also agree with a lot of people in chat that I see, like I for one would not mind if they made monsters too big for gates and they just can't go through the gates. They have to go through the walls. Um, like they have to, you know, make sure they have wall breaker. They have to attack the walls and fight their way through the walls. Like, I don't think, I don't think that would be bad at all. Um, but yeah. Oh. I have a giant red rod. Careful, you. <laughs> the real fat chicken. Thanks so much for the prime sub. Really appreciate it. All right, we're going to keep going. Shalanka. Uh, 
uh, I'm going to stand next to the city because she's probably going to attack it. All right, we have wiped out. I believe we've wiped. Yeah, we've wiped out Yin Yin's faction, so that's good. Yin Yin is dealt with. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up a uh, legendary warrior. I'm trying to get our casualty replenishment as high as I can. And we're going to upgrade our big base. Um, let me go through the name units real quick to see if I've got some more. Yes, I do. I've got a bunch of skink names that I need to do. We are the skinks. Yes. Yes. Ah, close enough. Yes, ye. Uh, name another unit of skinks. Future designer first. That's not very nice. Uh, uh, I'm going to send your points back because I'm not doing that one. Oh, eight pointed star. I will absolutely do that, my dude. Name a unit Gorse Chosen. Oh, what better unit than Skinks for that? Hunt down those lizard trinkets. Uh, okay. I think that's everything that I have right now for the units that are available. Who would win? Lord Mazda Mundi or Arcane of the Ever Chosen? Um, I mean, to be frank, from like a plot perspective, Archeon would win. Um, from a lore or from from like a realistic considering what they've achieved in the lore if they were to go toe to toe I honestly think Masta Money would beat him um because like uh, uh, it would be it would be a little rough for Archeon it would be a little rough oh headphones are dying charger preferably without the Eastern River Lords have fallen. Can we get an F in chat for Yin Yin? Who thought she could get away with her invasion of Lustria hundreds and hundreds of years ago? But nah, son. I came calling. I came calling. How much do I need for this? 7,000. Okay, next turn I'll be able to afford it. All right. It's time to deal with... I think we're going to focus our efforts on the Vampire Coast now. But we'll be able to afford the building I want next turn. Holy Artist 95 cheered. X200. So I just got him and I got a carrot cake slice. So tell me what I missed. Uh, not too much. We're playing Nakai. I'm wearing a full dinosaur suit. I've got the golden tributes on my arms. I've also got my Lizardman sword with me. Present. So you missed, I guess, Present. a little bit of cosplay goodness. And we've just kind of been hanging out and slaughtering our way across Cathay. Um, extra money? Yeah, sure. I will accept the Dark Emissary for some extra cash. Oh, I'm very tempted to just get the last upgrade. Oh, that's very tempting because it does give me a lot of money per turn. But no, no, stick to the plan. Stick to the great plan. And we're going to move over near Fu Chao. Perfect. Uh, Immortal Empires should release at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow. Or 3 p.m. BST. Also, I hope you enjoy your carrot cake. So, Tech, can I give you a quick rundown of the dragon kiddos and what wind of magic they represent, where they are now, and if I think they'll be playable, and if so, where? Uh, sure. So let's do a really quick breakdown. So the two, we have two playable dragon kids already. We have Miao Ying, who is the dragon of water, also known as the dragon of the wind of life or Gairan. And she is in Northern Cathay out of Nangao. And she's responsible for the Great Bastion. Uh, then down in the, around the Warpstone Desert in Shengyang, uh, we have, um, we have Zhao Ming, who is the Iron Dragon, also known as the Dragon of Metal or the Dragon of Shaman, uh, the Wind of Metal. And uh, he defends West Cathay. Uh, the ones that are still around um, and could potentially become playable are Yuan Bo, 
uh yuan bone is the yuan bo is the is the um the stone dragon or the uh the meteor dragon he's the dragon of the meteor winds uh and he is the dragon of the lore of heavens or uh azir and he rules mainly over the central provinces of Cathay, but he's also responsible for Wei Jin uh, and the imperial provinces, so like the city of the Shukagan and uh, Wei Jin itself. He's also the grand administrator of Grand Cathay, so he's the one that talks to his father, the Celestial Dragon Emperor, a lot. And whenever the Celestial Dragon Emperor like issues a decree or something, um, uh, Yuan Bo is the one that handles it. And uh, Yuan Bo, uh, most likely, if we ever see him playable, I suspect he will be in Grand Cathay itself. Uh, as for where he will be, he'll probably be somewhere in Central Cathay. Um, I'm not exactly sure where exactly, because we have Deathmaster Snitch and Shing Po. Uh, so for um, the Celestial, or for Yuan Bo, I don't know, he'd probably be like somewhere in the Celestial Riverlands, maybe? Uh, so maybe he'd be in Sheng Wu or um, Shilong, probably one of those two. Um, and we know that we know that among the dragon kids, he is also the most powerful wizard. So he is the least likely one to take to battle. Uh, he tends to be like the least aggressive of the five dragon children. He tends to prefer more of an administrative role, but he does arrive in battle. Uh, and he is said to be the most powerful sorcerer of the of the um, remaining children. Then there's Li Dao. So this this is Li Dao's faction, uh, the Burning Wind Nomads. So the Burning Wind is Li Dao's um, thing, and he is the Dragon of Fire, or the Dragon of the Wind of Fire, also known as Akshi. And uh, Li Dao uh, rules Southern Cathay. And he is responsible for uh, negotiating with the two foreign courts. So he has to deal with the monkey court, uh, which is ruled over by the monkey king of the mountains of heaven, which are right here. Um, they they separate end from uh, Grand Cathay. And they are, I believe, the tallest or one of the tallest mountain ranges in the world. Um, and um, the monkey king rules over all the monkey warriors. And he has a bit of an interesting relationship with um Li Dao uh they are implied to be rivals more than hated enemies and that Li Dao often has to kind of deal a lot in diplomacy with him but they apparently tend to fight together against the um the chaos worshiping Naga of Koresh uh which are the snake men uh and sometimes they also fight against the forces of end uh so on he deals a lot with like the monkey warriors in Cathay um, the and the Monkey King. Cheered. X100. At Law Master Off Sotek, does Narkai have any new skills, or did he only get updates to the faction mechanic? Uh, I don't think his skills have changed that much. Um, here they all are. You can kind of look at him. He still becomes unbreakable. Uh, he still gives frenzy and speed to his army. He causes discourage. He gets like big damage buffs. Um, I don't think his skill tree, oops, sorry, has really changed at all. Um, his items have changed a little bit, most notably the golden tributes, which gives him, him personally a 15% ward save, but also gives anyone within 35 meters a 10% ward save, uh, on top of its perfect vigor. So that's really nice. And Nakai also gets much more buff due to his faction effects. But anyway, back to the dragon kids. So Lee Dao, I highly suspect would, uh, arrive in, um, um, here. I believe he would start in Fu Hung. And he would be responsible for a lot of the dealing with the Monkey King stuff if he's ever playable, have the lore of fire, uh, probably mixed with the lore of Yang. Um, and he also is, uh, he also deals with the, the Tiger Court. So the Tiger Court is how uh, the Tiger Men of End negotiate with um, uh, Grand Cathay. And of course we have the village of the Tiger Men up here in the broken lands of Tian Li. Uh, so it is supposedly there is where the Tiger Court is based and where Lee Dao has to negotiate with them. Uh, we don't know exactly where the Tiger Men are, like diplomatically with Cathay. I would I would imagine it's kind of an on and off relationship. Uh, and we don't really know what leads the Tiger Men. But the Tiger Men are the only confirmed unit that we know of for Grand Cathay. Or uh, sorry, for uh, the Kingdoms of End. The Kingdoms of End have the Tiger Men.
Um, the monkey warriors apparently tend to belong to Grand Cathay. Um, and then the final still around dragon uh, kid who we just wiped out her faction um, is uh, Yin Yin. And Yin Yin is the dragon of the East. And she's also the grand admiral of Grand Cathay's fleets. Uh, she leads from either Fu Shao. Does he not have regeneration as a skill anymore? No. Uh, I don't think Nakai ever had regen as a skill. Unless I'm crazy. I don't think he's ever had regen as a skill in base game. Are you sure that's not a mod? Cause that, that's not ringing a bell for me. But no, he does not have regen. Um, but in any event, uh, so Yin Yin uh, is control of the East and she also controls all of the various ports in Cathay. She's also uh, the wealthiest um, or one of the wealthiest of the dragon kids and is responsible for the Jade fleet or the Jade dragon fleet. Um, but uh, I can't remember what her capital is. I don't remember if it's e it's either Fu Chao, Bei Shai or uh, Shi Wu, but I forget which one it is um, off the top of my head. But uh, Yin Yin is notoriously aggressive. Um, she is the only one of the dragon kids that we know for a fact has invaded another uh, another continent, which uh, Yin Yin apparently against the um, expressed desire of her father uh, or her mother. It's not clear which of her parents she went against, but she went against one of her parents. Um, she uh, waged a war against the Lizardmen of the Southlands and Lustria because Yin Yin did not realize that the Southlands, um, or she did not realize Lustria existed, like the New World existed. So when her fleet set sail, she set one fleet west. So she sent one fleet down through the Great Canal and they popped out into the Sea of Dread uh, and they were supposed to invade the Southlands from the east. And then her other army was going to sail west around the globe until they arrived in west, the western jungles of the Southlands and they were going to do a pincher movement from both sides to take out the Lizardmen. Uh, and she led this invasion. Uh, she went with the Eastern fleet. However, it did not go well for Yin Yin because her fleet that was going to attack from the east was completely annihilated by the Slan of Zlatlan who unleashed uh, a series of hurricanes and typhoons to just obliterate the fleet. Um, and her Western fleet discovered Lustria thinking that it was the Southlands. They too ran into a lot of problems because the sail took longer than they thought it would. And they also ran into a lot of like nasty storms as they reached the uh, the uh, the Sea of Squalls and the um, um, Far Sea. And while they did make it to Lustria, they started marching inland, thinking they would they would find their comrades who sailed uh, to attack the Eastern shore. So they would just meet up with them and they never found them. Uh, so they ended up pissing off the Lizardmen a few times. I believe they ran into the Lizardmen. Uh, I want to say they ran into the Lizardmen of either Hexwaddle or Slodhapek. Ah! But only one guy survived. There was a single survivor who made it to one of the ports in Lustria and managed to successfully make it back to Grand Cathay. And so those are uh, those are the five dragon kids. So if Yin Yin was playable, I highly suspect that she would show up in uh, Lustria and be a playable Lustria campaign. Um, I would, I, she'd, she'd probably start somewhere on the Eastern shores, but there's a lot of empty space in Lustria now. Um, as far as what lore of magic she uses, we don't know a hundred percent sure, uh, but Yin Yin, uh, tends to correspond to the elemental, uh, the elemental wind of wood. Um, based on conversations that I've had, uh, she seems to be the dragon of wood. Uh, which means that she's the dragon of beasts. So she she's the dragon of the lore of beasts or um, uh, um, Gur, which would explain why she's so aggressive. Um, then there are four missing dragon kids, though we, if you use enough context clues, I'm pretty sure we know where pretty much all of them are. So first uh, here, this is the dragon river. 
Um, so the Dragon River connects to uh, Wei Jin and also connects to the Great Bastion. It is impossible to cross the Dragon River. Uh, if you try to cross it, um, by boat at least, there are literal spirits, um, like the spirits of the ancestral dead of Grand Cathay will come up and drag you down. And there's no way to make it across. No one has ever successfully made it across. Uh, and they are always butchered. So like whenever the boats make it, do get across, they're just filled with corpses. Um, so this is where uh, one of the missing dragon daughters is, and she is the dragon of death or the dragon of spirits. So in, in Cathay, she's known as the spirit dragon, but that translates to the death dragon or the dragon of Shaish. And we know that she slumbers at the bottom of the river. Uh, so she's sleeping at the bottom of the river and her dreams are the Cathayan underworld. So there is a Cathayan afterlife or a Cathay underworld where the ancestral dead of Grand Cathay go to uh, when they die. And those uh, that's how, if you are playing as one of the Cathay characters, if your harmony is in balance, you know how you get that army ability where you could summon ancestral warriors to fight alongside you and they're literally made out of spirits. Where they're coming from is the dreams of the spirit dragon. Uh, but she's down there and she helps protect Grand Cathay by making it impossible for anyone to sail across. So like the earliest, the, 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 the safest place to land in Grand Cathay is up here near next to High Shy. So it's actually very difficult to invade Cathay from like uh, the land mass that's equivalent to Korea. Um, another dragon kid uh, that we know um, a little bit about is Shinzu. So Shinzu is the dragon of light. Um, I forget what light, I think, yeah, she's the light dragon, which is known as light as the elemental wind of light. Uh, and she is also a daughter and she is um, one of the youngest of the dragon kids. I believe Zhao Ming is the absolute youngest, but I think Shinzu is either the, is the second youngest. But Shinzu was last seen. Uh, she flew across uh, the mountains of Morn and the world's edge mountains, and she vanished over the mountains of Norska. Um, nobody knows where she went. Um, suppo well, supposedly Ursin knows where she went, the bear god, uh, but no one else is sure of the details. We know that she's still alive, um, and we know that she vanished on some important quest against the forces of chaos and an attempt to bring harmony to the world because chaos is tipping the world out of balance. Uh, but she did not tell any of her siblings uh, or her parents where she was going. She might have told her mother, but if she did, her mother hasn't shared that information with anyone. Uh, so she vanished over the Norskin Mountains, but she we know for a fact she's still alive, but we don't know where she went. Um, then there are the last two dragons. We do not 100% know where the two of them are. I have a theory where both of them are, uh, but it is it is very likely they are both boys. Um, they are both sons, and it's the Shadow Dragon, uh, or the Dragon of Ulgu, and the Undivided Dragon. So the Dragon Child who is not associated with any of the Winds of Magic, or possibly associated with all of the Winds of Magic. Um, now, this is my personal theory. This is my tinfoil hat. Oh, on. This is my tinfoil hat theory because I cannot prove this, but I believe that the undivided child, the child who was not associated with one wind, but instead all eight of them became corrupted by Zinch because being a dragon associated with all eight of the winds of magic, that dragon child would be very susceptible to chaos corruption because chaos is literally just the wanton chaotic mixing of all eight winds of magic. Uh, so that dragon would be the most likely to fall to chaos. And we know that Zinch is trying to corrupt the dragon kids, but has been fairly unsuccessful. Furthermore, we do know that there is a terrifying dragon from Cathay. So a Cathayan Eastern dragon who was terrifying and like unstoppable. Um, I forget what they're like, real name was but they were known by many people as flame fang and flame fang was a really 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 powerful dragon uh who was corrupted by zinch and came eventually made its way west where it um uh, eventually it did a whole bunch of 
destruction and a horrible death and all this other stuff. Um, and it devoured the sorcerer named Shirian, uh, the chaos sorcerer Shirian, uh, where the eye who created the eye of Shirian, at least supposedly, um, the supposedly part being it devoured Shirian, but it did absolutely devour the eye of Shirian. And uh, it um, it ended up facing off against Archaeon in the Southern Chaos Waste. The dragon's name was Ying Yin Yin Ye Long. Cool. There you go. The dragon's name was Yin Ye Long. Yin Ye Long. Okay. Uh, and yes, if it was the, if well if it, if it was the ninth child, that actually would make sense that it fell to Zinch. Um, that being said. Uh, it Flame Fang fought a epic battle against Archaeon in the Southern Chaos Waste and was ultimately killed. And Archaeon killed Flame Fang and recovered the Eye of Shirian from its gullet, and that's how he got the. I believe that was his third treasure of the Ever Chosens. Um, uh, and as far as it comes to like depictions of Flame Fang, depending on which book you read, Flame Fang has a very different appearance in every book. Uh, there is one story where Flame Fang is more of like a like a Cathayan dragon, so more like a Chinese dragon. There's another story where um, Flame Fang appears more like a typical Western dragon where it has wings. Um, but like, I, I don't think they had thought that far ahead uh, as far as like, oh, this is going to end up being like the dragon children did not exist when they wrote Flame Fang. Uh, I think though, if they, they were to update us on the dragon kids, it is very likely that Flame Fang was an idea they had in mind when they were creating the dragon Kildr children a few years ago. Uh, wow, this, this tinfoil hat is really on the way out. I need a new one. Uh, Scream Fetamine 6, thanks so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Red Host, hope you're doing well. Uh, a Little Hatred, thank you so much for the two months of Prime, by the way. Um, the last dragon kid is very tinfoil hatty for me, which is the Shadow Dragon. So the shadow dragon who may be a boy or girl, um, I think it's actually even right now, so it could be either way, but the shadow dragon is probably the most mysterious um, and uh, lesser known of the dragon kids because shadow being the lore of Olgu is all about obfuscation and illusion and trickery. Um, Noob to hire, thanks so much for the six months. Or, uh, um, so let, I'm going to finish this before I answer that. Dr. Hoovian, thank you so much for the two gifted subs. So the, uh, the, the shadow dragon, I believe is dead. So I believe, or at least faked her death, but, or faked his or her death, but I think they're actually dead. So what I think happened to the shadow dragon is I believe that the shadow dragon child was for some reason heavily involved with the ogres or at the very least uh ha fought against the ogre kingdoms very very long time ago and my suspicion for this is that um um uh Kui Yin so Kui Yin is the is the the moon empress it's the dragon kid's mother Kui Yin is known for being incredibly empathetic towards humans like she really really likes humans and as part of her really 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 liking humans um she is known to go extremely out of her way to protect humans uh and like it it's said in cathayan culture that she sheds a tear for every child of cathay that dies which there's a lot of humans in Cathay. Um, and the Moon Empress is, but she is, she also disguises herself as like a kindly old woman or other forms and disguises. And she just wanders around Cathay helping people. Like she's known to do that. Um, so she's very empathetic. And the, the lore of magic that Kui Yin is most um, uh, associated with, even though she obviously invented the lore of Yin, and that's kind of like her ultimate staple of the four lords of magic that make up the lore of yin the one she is most heavily associated with is shadow magic ulgu um so what i think is that like his or her mother the shadow child the shadow dragon kid was very empathetic towards humans um was very very loving of humans and went out of their way to protect humans and what happened with the ogres way back in the day? Because the ogre kingdoms, uh, before they were really the ogre kingdoms, but the ogres and their ancestral homelands, which is now where the Warpstone Desert is, so very around here next to the Celestial Riverlands, this is the ancestral home of the ogre kingdoms. 
or the ogres and there were millions of them millions of ogres and the ogres uh they lived on these plains and they were a nomadic people that just kind of followed around wandering tribes of beasts that they would kill and eat and they were very happy but their population grew so large uh and we knew the ogres fought alongside the cathayans in the the uh, great cataclysm so like the ogres were side by side with the cathayans but something changed which is that the ogres grew to such a large population that some of their kind started wandering into Cathay and eating the Cathayans. So they started feasting on peasants and farmers and children, and they started developing a taste for man flesh. So they started eating people and killing people, and they became these terrifying, horrible raiders. And I believe that the shadow child, who was very empathetic towards peasants and humans, much more so than her fellow brothers and sisters, though Zhao Ming is also noted to be very fond of humans. I believe that the shadow child went to confront the ogres and she fought them. So I think that these ogre tribes who had wandered into Cathay proper and started eating people fought against the shadow child and while she was immensely she or he was immensely powerful um ogres are also extremely powerful and ultimately these ogre tribes and their tyrants successfully killed the shadow dragon so i think that they killed the shadow dragon child and ate them um or at the very least killed them and with their death this, when the Celestial Dragon Emperor found out, he was pissed and he was livid beyond any imagining. And in his rage, he went to the court of the Astromancers and told them, I want you to summon a meteor, a comet so big that it exterminates the entire ogre species. I want them wiped from the face of the earth. And they said, okay. And so he used his magic up in Wei Jin and channeled it further through the court of the Astromancers. Um, and they used all of their magic that they possibly could to pull down uh, a comet, to pull down um, the greatest meteor they could see. And in their misguided rage, well, probably fair rage, but their misguided taking it out on an entire species, instead of just those responsible because the vast majority of the ogres never would have done this the vast majority of the ogres just wanted to live in their homelands and respected the treaties with grand cathay it was only a small percentage of the ogres who became these horrible monsters but the dragon emperor condemned them all to death instead of just those responsible so they summon a comet but that's where zinc shows up and Zinch, being the conniving little son of a bitch that he is, turns this into an opportunity. So Zinch tinkers with it, and instead of just pulling any comet, he makes sure that what the, the although they pull the largest celestial body they can, what they end up pulling is a giant, colossal chunk of warp stone that broke off from the Chaos Moon Morse Lib, which the Cathayans almost assuredly did not know about because they never would have done that. They would have pulled a mundane comet because the ramifications of pulling a warpstone meteor were insane. So they summon this massive meteor. It starts falling towards the planet. And once it starts falling, there's there ain't no stopping it. So it starts falling and this green sun appears in the sky and the ogres look up and they're like, whoa, what's that? Like, woo, that's, that's weird, that's, that's odd. Um, and it to them as it's coming closer and closer and it grows brighter and brighter and brighter it becomes so bright in the sky that it literally is outshining the day sun so like the days and nights are gr a vivid green um, a haunting sickly green and the moons and the sun are totally being outshone by this new celestial body and to the ogres it almost looks like it has a mouth made of flames that's like opening and closing as it approaches the planet and eventually it slams into the planet right here, right here near the Vale of Titans and the Warpstone Desert. And this meteor slams home and the impact, the shock wave, the wall of warp flame created by the impact instantly annihilates, uh, I believe it's three fourths of the ogre's species.
Oh, ads? Okay, that's fine. That gives me a second to do some stuff. Fucking ads! Joins the red host. <laughs> Cursed Sotek spawn. Let me know when they're over, chat. Time to remove the hat. Oh yeah, I should take that off. Especially because it actually does make it hotter. Hey, Lord Magmia, I appreciate that. Just make sure people know that it's a head cannon. Add over? Okay, so add over. So the comet comes down, it slams into the ogre's homeland right here. Um, and creates the Great Maw Inquisitor Thomas and Chim wipes out three-fourths of the ogre race and it makes their the homeland into the Warpstone death, Desert. So they get completely forced out. With Elvis and Tupac. I mean, that could be true. Like, if any dragon could fake their death, it is the Shadow Dragon. Maybe the Shadow Dragon just hated the ogres. And uh, maybe she faked her death and then fled to Nippon. Who knows? Teaspoon of salt cheered. X100. But that's that's what I think. Early in the game to say, but how is the vassal system? Uh, I actually really like the vassal system. I I've played a bit of this campaign already, so like this isn't my first time messing around with this. Uh, uh, personally, I really enjoy it. I think it's great. Um, okay, so now that chat can see, it's time for the most important thing, chat. Oracle, the sacred plax placeholder. So. I have loaded in me and Chloe from our Oxyodal campaign, and we're joining up next turn, apparently. Let's get, uh, uh, let's get upkeep reduction. So this is, this is the, uh, this is the Chloe Adon. You'll see it when we actually get into a pro pro proper battle. Hey, Anonymous, thanks so much for gifting 10 subs. Unfortunately, please don't do it anonymously so I can thank you guys. Also, it makes Throt like talk a lot more than he normally would. They made it so allies don't declare war on your vassals. I have not, I have not had allies declare war on my vassals through all of my chaos campaigns and my Nakai campaign. Alright, time to go to war with the vampires. Oh wait, I was already where I wanted to be, I just forgot. Whoops. Curse and Zotac spawn! Play. I'm bad playing with myself on stream. Oh my. What does your vassal do? Uh, they have, they have fairly large garrisons, and they basically just, um, they basically just uh, give you shitloads of money. So they give you a lot of money, and also. Uh, they give you points, depending on what kind of settlement is. And as you get points, you unlock various buffs for Nakai and your faction. So you can see, like, I'm getting 10% uh, missile resistance for all Source, Crocs, Gorse, Temple Guard, and Nakai, because I have seven points from the settlements I've dedicated to Quetzal. Wait, does that mean I can import cavalry with any high elf lord? You, yes, you can, you can import any hero from any other campaign, as long as you can recruit that hero type. X100. So take you bad boy playing with yourself in stream XD. Uh, Sim Sala Kim, thank you very much for the prime sub. Welcome to the Red House. Uh, okay, I don't need this priest anymore. Get out of here. Uh, we'll just auto resolve this one. And we're still building up with Shalanka right now. Good adornments for more casualty replenishment. Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100. Another wretched foul wizard thing joins the red host. Mm -hmm. First Sotek spawn. Yep. Thanks for the bits. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't really have anything I want just yet. Can heroes use sea lanes? I don't know. Let's find out. I believe they can, yeah. It looks like they can. It's also about that time. 
Uh, hey, mods, when we get the chance, could we do a poll on what kind of lord chat wants to lead our second army? We could do a Croxcore Ancient, a Red Crescent Skink Chief, a Source Old Blood, or a Slawn. So if chat could make a call on that, that would be swell. Don't go Bob, thanks so much for the two months! Cursed Sotek spawn. Smile. Uh, lore fact about dwarf armor, Grumrol, I think. So yes, Grumrol is the most important metal there is to the Dawi. Uh, it's, you know, it's that typical nonsense of like, it's like, it's kind of like steel, but is like immensely, has immensely superior properties. But it's also, um, the, the, one of the big major things about it is that it is very, 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 very good for rune magic as well. Um, it functions beautifully for rune magic. Uh, which is, you know, very nice. Um, especially when you're in the, uh, you're in the habit of, uh, creating runes. Um, beyond that though, it, uh, it's often referred to as star metal, uh, because Grumrill, the vast majority of the time, Grumrill comes from large meteors or comets that have struck the planet and were full of incredibly rare metals. Um... That being said, there are truly colossal Gromril seams to be found across the world um, that are deep, deep down to the earth from ancient times. Which Cathay legendary lords do I think we'll get and how many? Um, I think you will probably get at least six or seven in the grand scheme of things. The ones that I'm current, I don't know how many dragon kids we're gonna get because personally I would prefer a little more diversity, um, but I would definitely like to see, um, I would, definitely like to see uh at very least i want to see the monkey king um shi hong which shi hong is the master artificer of nan gao uh so he's a blind master inventor who is responsible for a lot of like the war machines and other impressive inventions to be found uh in grand cathay and he also specializes very much in um uh, he also, uh, invented the, uh, the sky, the sky junk. He invented the first ever sky junk and he has his own unique sky junk. That's I believe called like the wind of the wind of the, like heaven's wind or something, um, that has like unique experimental war machines on it. And he sounds really, really cool. Uh, and would be a very, it would be, I would really like to have like a human legendary Lord in Cathay. Not, besides just dragons. Oops, I forgot to do that. Um, I'd also like to see a, I'd also like to see a grand master, um, like a grand master of the celestial dragon monks. We don't know if they're still called the celestial dragon monks, but the Kung Fu inspired dudes do exist and they do have a grand master. Um, I would imagine he's probably a Shukagon as opposed to just a normal human. Uh, which could make him interesting. Uh, but I would love him as a legendary lord. And then once you have all those, uh, then, yeah, sure, we can start filling in with dragon kids. Um, you know, you could do, like, uh, Yuan Bo would probably be the most interesting. Um, oh, yeah, so my skink priest set sail. He will arrive in Lustry on two turns. Um, but, uh, yeah. Lee Dow's already mentioned the flavor. Flavor text means absolutely nothing, guys. The flavor text does not mean anything. Y'all have no idea how much new flavor text there is and how many like random ass characters are brought up. Like they're doing a lot of really cool lore stuff and expanding very heavily on the lore. But just because you get a, just because you get a, uh, like a lore quote or something like that, that does not mean you're going to be playable by any means of the imagination. Oh, this place has walls. That being said, like, is it possible we'll get all five dragon kids? Yeah, it's certainly possible. You know, you could have like, uh, you could have Yin Yin as like the character that really takes you somewhere exotic, being Lustria. Um, and she has like a lot of naval bonuses and like bonus income for ports and all that stuff. You could have uh, Yuan Bo be like the super heavy caster lord with a lot of magic bonuses. And then you could have Li Dao be like the hardcore martial artist combat lord. Uh, who maybe also offers like uh, bonuses 
towards or against like the tiger men and stuff. Um, any of those could be really fun. Is there a Lu Bu equivalent in Warhammer? Um, I don't know because I don't really know that much about Lu Bu other than like, I know that he's like an amazing fighter. Whoops, I didn't mean to click that. I know he's an amazing fighter and I know that he's also a bit of a treacherous little shit. Um, and like he betrayed a lot of people before he ended up getting killed. Uh, and he was like the best in the West or whatever. Song of Power cheered. X100. Cazador versus Gorfan DLC when? Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100. Torox is Lubu. Torox is Lubu? Oh man. Wish I had deployed more correctly. That would have been nice. A slon. Okay. Well, since a slon won, we have to do a we have to do a secondary poll. So we need to do another poll. What kind of slon? A high magic slon, a life magic slon, a fire magic slon, or it's the last one that I never take. Fire, life, high. What the fuck is the last one? It's not Heavens, because Heavens isn't playable in campaign for some goddamn reason. Light! Thank you, Light! Is Aberash Lubu? I don't think so, but I don't know enough about Lubu to dispute that. Wow, Nakai actually got through that gate really fast. Impressive old gator go vote chat go vote getting hanky with it thanks so much for the five gift subs sweet being you absolute sexy bastard thank you for unleashing a new spawning we always need reinforcements here Ah, oh, bats! Oh. Come and get it, zombies. Vote, you don't see a poll? Well, it's up there. I don't know what to tell you. All right. Uh, Stegadon. Go that way. Lost Crocs and for alligator. I want y'all to head that way. Harry the Hammer is Lubu. Wow, I need to order dinner. I am just now realizing that I am like immensely hungry. Need to figure out what I'm gonna do for dinner. Uh, I think, I think the Wood Elves are pretty much all DLC'd out. Um, I do think that the Wood Elves have a very high likelihood of getting some free LC. Uh, at the very minimum, I think they're going to get Araloth, uh, as a Wood Elf Legendary Lord, because Araloth is the only normal Wood Elf who is a Legendary Lord. Um, the rest of them are all, like, demigods and shit. Um, Araloth is literally just a guy, uh, who is, like, immensely brave and an incredibly skilled fighter. Um, whereas everybody else are, like, yeah, they're all, like, aspects of nature or gods or demigods. Stuff like that. Um, but, uh, outside of Airloft, the only other thing they could really do is, like, a Shadow Dancer hero, I guess. Shadow Dancers are, would be kind of like a, like a melee hero. 
with really good melee stats that's also capable of casting shadow magic. Uh, they could give us Nyeth the Prophetess. That'd be kind of cool. Nyeth the Prophetess would be a full caster legendary lord who's like a really, 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 really strong wizard. Like, I'd, I'd be, I'd be pr pr pretty down for that. That'd be, you know, that'd be nice. How far is the distance between Lustria and Cathay? Nobody, uh, I don't think that's ever been measured. We don't, we don't have that on any maps because we don't have any maps that connect the two. That being said, if you measure how far it is between South America and uh, China, uh, I think you will have a good estimate because their world is very heavily based on our world. The Life Slon. Okay, cool. I usually, personally, I usually go for life or fire. Those are usually my two favorite. Though sometimes, sometimes I go high. I, I never go. I almost never go light though. The light's not bad by any means. It's just not my favorite. Those are some committed zombie pirate gunnery mobs. Are they breaking? Yeah, okay, they're breaking. Good job. Light doesn't mesh well with wizards. Uh, tell that to my um, Bjorna's Time Warp Saurus in Croxagors. <laughs> Strangest Nakai fact. Uh, probably the strangest fact about Nakai is it's genuinely not very clear whether he is an actual, uh, whether he is an actual flesh and blood creature or if he is basically something more. Like whether he's become a true spirit of the jungle, which is why his faction has that name. It's not, we, we honestly don't know for sure. Uh, because the big thing about Nakai is that, um, his, uh, oh, I totally forgot my Skink Oracle that entire fight. I don't even know where he was. He was probably just standing somewhere being like, all right, uh, that's cool. Um, but uh, that being said, he probably, uh, it, it's, it's hard to say because like the Lizardmen seem to genuinely worship him as a type of like jungle god and worship is a very powerful force in Warhammer Fantasy. Like if you believe hard enough, like things tend to come true, so to speak. All right, we got our Slon of Life. Oh, perfect timing, chat, because look at this. So we're going to get Slon of Distinction, which means that we're going to get at minimum a rank six Slon. Ah, oh, he's third generation. All right, I guess. I, okay, don't, don't, don't be ageist, Sotek. Don't be ageist. Just, just take it. Third generation's not bad. At least he's not fifth generation. All right, we'll get Barrier... Plus winds of magic, spell, uh, that, and more spell. And then we are going to send him. His name's Lana Wana. Your wife and you would like to buy me dinner. Oh, that's super sweet. You don't need to worry about that though. Like I'm, I'm doing quite well. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, if you want to like do a tip or something, uh, there, there's a tip system down below or there's like bits or subs or whatever, but like, please don't feel like you need to do anything like that. That is super not necessary. Just being here is genuinely more than I could ask for. I really appreciate y'all taking the time out of your day to come hang out with me because it literally could just be me by myself hanging out. Uh, do the chaos ways grow or shrink over time? Both. The chaos ways are kind of like a living, breathing entity. As the power of chaos waxes and wanes, it pushes out and pulls back in. 
Um, so the more powerful chaos becomes and the more they're invade, the further south their invasions push, the chaos waste literally comes with them, which has resulted overall in the chaos waste expanding. Um, they are much larger than they used to be back in the day. Well, at least it isn't an eighth generation slim. The inbreeding really got to them at that point. Technically, those don't exist, but if they did, they, they would probably be very sad. How would Balthazar, Gelt, and Zhao Ming interact in the lore? Um, I imagine they would have a lot of really, really interesting academic discussions. Balthazar Gelt is a very strong, like, I must protect humanity no matter the cost kind of people. Um, so I am imagine him and Zhao Ming would have a lot of interesting things to discuss the only thing I would be genuinely a bit worried about is I would be worried about how um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how they would handle uh, or I, I don't know how Gelt would handle Zhao Ming's madness because Zhao Ming is going mad very slowly, but um, though it seems to be speeding up a bit, but he is he is starting to lose his mind, genuinely. Uh, actually, I'm going to take the stick it on too. Is there a redeem for Lord Names, or is Unit the only one we can get? No, no, you can you can put characters in there. I I accept characters as well. I'm just too lazy to make the name as broad as it should be. Bulwark, thanks so much for the ten gift subs. But yeah, I, I do think Gelt and Zhao Ming would get along. But I think when Zhao Ming realizes that there's something wrong, or sorry, when Gelt realizes there's, some, there's something very wrong with Zhao Ming, um, I'm not, ex I honestly don't know how he would react. Um, I'm also not at all sure how M Zhao Ming would re react to Gelt turning his actual, we don't know to what, what Gelt did to himself exactly. It's not clear if he's wearing a mask or if that just is his face. Um, it's it's hard to say uh so zhao ming with how skilled he is in metal magic and being an ancient dragon he might actually be able to tell what is going on with gelt whether he would react to that positively or negatively who can say zhao uh I, yeah if you actually play a zhao ming campaign listen to what he says like whenever you're clicking on him or moving him around the campaign map if you actually pl uh, pay close attention to what he says um you it actually is made very readily apparent that he's not all there um he's hearing voices and the thing what he's actually hearing is Zhao Ming hears the great ma talking to him which is actually really sad and also super fucked up if you think about it but also kind of i don't know if ironic's the best word but like there's something almost suitable about that because Cathay is the one who summoned it into the first place. All right, uh, I got to find the earliest character redeem. Because I do do these in order of how I get them. So like, uh, so like this someone, someone, so Kitsino Adventures is the earliest redeem I have for a lord. And they want a lord named after the crocodile from Peter Pan. What the hell is his name? Does he have a name? Also, it doesn't help that Zhao Ming works with Warpstone a lot. He infuses a lot of his artifacts and weaponry with Warpstone because he's found out how to purify it, but that does not make him completely immune to its effects that make you go crazy. Oh, his name's TikTok. Oh, I never knew that. When she said TikTok, I was like, is that a is that a reference to like the, the thing? TikTok Croc. TikTok. Rock. That's a suitable name for this campaign. All right, so we got some new Croxagores, so I need to go through. I really wish I had this somehow better organized. Um, ah, here's Go. Oh, wait, no, I, ha I haven't recruited them yet. Hooray! Dane Bramage made it to Lustria. Awesome. We're going to head up towards the Shrine of Sotek. So you see, it took him two turns, but he made the he made the sale. Ten gift subs were... Yeah, I I thought I caught it. Yeah, I think the Bulwark. Big Daddy Dweel. Thank you very much for the tier one sub. Appreciate that. 
Did they have spread TikTok to Lustria? Yes, it has. How would I feel if George Lucas wanted to make a Warhammer movie? I think George Lucas makes fantastic movies so long as he's not allowed to do everything himself. Like, if, if he wants to go make a movie, fine, but he's not allowed to be in charge of everything because when he's in charge of everything, he starts making really poor decisions. Like dialogue. I think he I think he tends to actually do a pretty good job as long as there's somebody there to like rein him in. All right, so TikTok Crocs heading to Lustria. We picked up some new Croxagores. So your name is going to be Croxman of Koresh. And your name is going to be Florida men. Truly terrifying creatures. All right. Um, has anyone done? Oh, another unit of skinks wants to be named the scaly boys. Probably going to lose these skinks in the future, but that's okay. We have so many goddamn name redeems. Uh, Saurus, Dinosaur, Saurus, more Saurus, more Skinks, Bastilodon. Uh, another wretched foul lizard thing uh, joins the Red Host. Uh, <laughs> cursed Sotek spawn. All right, I think I'm caught up. Do you think it is possible that the Shadow Dragon could be announced as a different character, but is just masquerading as that character? Uh, if they ever give us Nippon, I could see that happening for Nippon. To, like, explain how there are very similar dragons in both Nippon and Cathay. <laughs> We've got an unnamed uh, Razor Dawn, if anybody wants that. Oh, no, I do I do have some more skink names. Somewhere. Thought I saw some. Ah, here we go. Tiny dino dudes. So we need to raise or sack Ishisu. Nice. I'm going to raise it. If I can get that quest. Woohoo! 2,400 gold. Hey, Bomber, thanks so much for the bits. And Crispy, thanks so much for the two months. Hammond underscore the underscore Estalian cheered. X100. Hey, can you give my name redeemed to an ancient Sally boy instead of a hero? Uh, how about Hammond? I'll do you one better. I'm going to send you back your points and then you can just resubmit it. That way I don't have to try and remember that. Uh, reduce recruitment cost would be pretty good, but so would cat. I really do like casualty replenishment. But we're actually doing pretty good on casualty replenishment. Like we've, we've got pretty solid casualty replenishment and I still need, I still, I have to have every dino building. Hey, Sacramore Warrior, thank you so much for the uh, three months. Okay, let's get the dino building. Good. Oh, gosh. Who's the oldest and youngest of the four Chaos Champions from the DLC? Uh, oh, I'm back. Uh, Festus the Leech Lord is definitely the youngest. Um, Festus has not been around crazy long. Alice, whoops. There Alice Doro, thanks so much for the prime. And thank you for the beating. Um, The oldest is Azazel. Azazel is the oldest by like so much it's not even funny azazel's been around for over 200 or uh azazel's been around for roughly 2500 years oh the lord croak fight nice uh 
Azazel Valkia Village Festus. Peasant? Yeah, that seems accurate. Peasant? Does the AI use the sea lanes? No, the AI um, genuinely does not how to know how to use teleports. That's yeah. something I've actually heard from the devs' mouths. Like the Wood Elf mechanic. Do you ever notice that Wood Elf armies never teleport for the AI? Because the AI literally doesn't know how to do it. Um, so that's why like CA always tends to be kind of hesitant about adding new... Um, they tend to hesitate whenever they add new features as far as um, like new mechanic, new teleport mechanics go. Uh, the reason they hesitate with those teleport mechanics is because the AI just doesn't know how to use them. At least in this game. I, I, hey, Daddy, do we great, I'm glad they did an empire, but this is an empire. Uh, I guess we should... Mm, I, okay, I think the best thing to do now would be to push Lokir Felhard out of the south. And once we have him out of the south, we can finish him off in the north. Ooh, this is really dangerous to do, but I'm, feel, I'm feeling dangerous. Dang, dang. Big Daddy Wheel, thanks so much for the 500 bits. Also, Holy Artist, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Also, I can't say what it is yet, chat, okay? Did you kill Lord Croak? Did he then become Lord Croaked? Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, why do you think he's called Lord Croak in the first place? Am I okay with people submitting Empire Q&A questions? Uh, as long as you got the points for it. Is there much information on the Imperial Dragon? Uh, the only thing we know about the Imperial Dragon is that it was discovered as an egg by explorers slash hunters in the world in the gray mountains i believe um and it was hatched and raised in the imperial zoo so it's really not that old it's a pretty young dragon um uh but it uh it's yeah it's been around for a hot while uh, or uh, sorry it's it is very powerful and it is quite large um uh, we don't know what kind of dragon it is we don't know how old it is exactly uh, but we know it lives in the zoo and it's considered it, it's very it's very chill it doesn't do a lot it's just kind of there though uh it is uh the only the only human who has seemingly been able to get through to its alien intellect and impress it enough that it's allowed them to lead it into battle is carl franz that being said, please, CA, give us the Imperial Dragon as a Regiment of Renown. Please, 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 please. That would be such a cool Regiment of Renown. Ooh, do I explore the island? Uh? I want to fight this myself. I mean, that is a lot of... That's a lot of zombies with guns. Yeah, I'll fight it myself. After this, chat, remind me to order dinner because I need to do that. The artist 95 cheered. X100. Do you think it would be fun if the Oakdorf dragon is a lost grandkid of the dragon emperor? No, he's way too young. He's way too young. Also, the dragon emperors, none of the dragon emperor's children have given birth to dragons, as far as we know. All of the celestial dragon emperor's grandkids are Shukagon. I don't see why they couldn't breed with another type of dragon, but we've never heard of them doing that. Do you ever think about when you look at all the Shukagon and the fact that there doesn't seem to be any grandchildren dragons? You ever think about it's like, it's basically like the equivalent to all the dragon kids. They're like reverse furries. Like, they got so into humans that they're seemingly unwilling to, like, track down and breed with any dragons. So they only breed with humans. That's kind of a cursed thought. Anyway, moving on. Well, theoretically, they could mate with a different species of dragon. I don't see why they couldn't. Oh, 
I'm, I'm just saying. Like, clearly they were walking around among all the peasants and were like, damn, those peasants be thick or something. Like, yeah, you have to wonder if the Celestial Dragon Emperor approves or if he's just like, I hate, like, why can't my kids be normal? I asked my kids to go out there and make sure like they continue the family legacy and they just end up screwing a bunch of peasants or like human nobles and stuff. But will they have any dragon babies? No. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just curious. From what I'm seeing from streams with early access, the end chant sounds for the old factions is I hear that Asian parents can sometimes be a little pushy when it comes to the 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 cons or the the discussion of uh, making sure there are grandchildren. So I just imagining the Celestial Dragon Emperor having that discussion. And like, you know, the Moon Empress was supportive no matter what. Like the, the Moon Empress, you know, was just like, like, honey, just, it's okay. Like you wanted grandkids, they given you grandkids. So shut up, like count your blessings. Kaiju battle! What are my thoughts on mind goblins? Never heard of them. Not familiar with the term. Feel free to shoot me a reference and I will look at it. Dude, Slon being able to get barrier is so nice because you can be a little more reckless with them and they don't like immediately just start taking damage. Of a bitch, <laughs> you piece of shit! Throw him in the snake pit! Into the snake pit! God damn, that's the first time I have ever fallen for that, and I've been streaming for like years. I don't know. I don't remember how long I've been streaming. I don't tend to keep track of anniversaries, which gets me into surprising, well, an unsurprising amount of trouble. But you piece of shit! Throw him in the snake pit. Unveiled men, just absolutely down to the bottom. Did you just snip snip my stegadon? Quit snip snipping my stegadon! I love these two have matched animations. I don't know if y'all caught that. Kept snipping my stegadon. Turn and face me, beast! Yeah, get him! Get him, Staggy! Whose name is Sotek Loves Ultramarines for some horrible, stupid ass reason? How about an unwholesome lore fact about the mysterious Snakemen of Koresh? So one of the very, very few things we know about this, we know a couple of small things about the Snakemen of Koresh or the Naga of Koresh more accurately. Number one, we know that they hunt humans like animals in the jungles. So they treat humans as a very like low class, basically like uh, entertainment slash um, herd animal type situation. Uh, and they like to hunt humans for sport uh, they like release humans into the jungle and hunt them down. Or there are also probably native tribes that live in the uh, jungles that try and avoid the Naga. But they hunt humans to apparently enslave them, but they also harvest their blood for magic and rituals. Um, on yes, Kaiju Battle Victory indeed. Uh, on top of that, we know some other stuff like... We know that uh, the Naga are led by Blood Naga Queens. We don't know much about the Blood Naga Queens. Um, like we don't really know like what they, we don't know what they look like or anything, but we know they seem to have a matriarchal society. Um, also, they are super big on what is known as blood magic, which blood magic is basically code for, uh, blood magic is essentially code for uh, dark magic or some sort of chaos type magic. 
Uh, we also know that they experiment with altering life forms. Um, kind of like how the Chaos Dwarves experiment with altering like machines and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, rather the they, they are rather notorious. I think we could do without this building. Because I want this building because it's upkeep and casualty replenishment. This building I don't really need. And then this building is super important because it lets me have more armies and heroes. All right, so we're going to finish off him and then head north. And also, I would like to buddy up with Zalming. Come on, you're kind of a lizard. I'm kind of a lizard. We're, we're meant to be friends. I need I need it to be that clip where it's like uh, from, what is it, Step Brothers? <laughs> Did we just become best friends? Yep. Do I have a lore fact about jade vampires for you? Uh, we, we know very, very little about the jade vampires. Literally, the only thing we know is that they are descendants of Harakte. Um, so Harakte was the, he was the grand vizier of Lamia. So each of the original vampires were among the high court of Lamia uh, alongside Neferata. Um, and Harakte, who's the only one of their kind that fled east to Grand Cathay, um, was the Grand Vizier. But we don't know much about him outside of that. So it would be a bad time for humans to get lost in the forest of Koshin. Uh, yeah, you don't want to go to Koresh. It's not tourist friendly. All right, we have pushed Lokir out of the south. So now we must head north. To purge the Dark Elves once and for all from these lands. Which will hopefully make Zalming really like us. For what reason am I disturbed from my experimentation? Well, okay, calm down. Uh how about how about I join your war against Clan Ashen? Because I don't like rats. And then we get a non-aggression. Deal. We are in accordance. Food time, yes, food time. Um, oh my gosh, what am I going to have for dinner? Let me see. Oh, I don't have my, I don't have my phone phone. I only have my second, I only have my backup phone, which is not actually capable of texting. Uh, hold on a second. So I'm going to need that. Y'all enjoying the stream? Y'all having an all right time? <laughs> God fucking damn it. Ugh. That's that's really good. I hate it, but it's really good. Holy artist ninety five cheese. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta go check for my so phone. I think it's downstairs. Pasta. I don't want pasta. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna get. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I don't think I'm feeling pasta. But uh, okay, so uh, I'll be right back. Um, I'm gonna go grab stuff. So feel free to get up, walk around, stretch a little bit, grab some food. But uh, please enjoy. <laughs> please enjoy this new. We, we finally have a BRB message. We have an official BRB message now. Oh God. It's so, it's so cursed. <laughs> uh, that's really funny. Uh, there we go. All right. I'll be right back. Hold the line. Holy artist 95 cheered. X100. This is a lizardman dad joke.
Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100. Hey Chad. You're also Tex Little Throg Champs. Also it scores in time. Hammond underscore the underscore Estalian cheered. X100. My wife asked me if I've seen the dog bowl. I said I didn't know he knew how to. Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100. We're no strangers to love you know the rules and so do I. Do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of you wouldn't get this from any other guy I just wanna tell you how I'm feeling gotta make you understand never gonna give you up never gonna let you down never gonna run around. Don Monthus cheered. X100. A crazy wife says to her husband that moose are falling from the sky. The husband says, it's reindeer. Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100. Welcome to Astalia, gentlemen. I will not lie, the chances of your survival are small. Some may even turn against your friends as living corpses. But you have my word, that I will use my arcane gifts to ensure your body. Hammond underscore the underscore Estalian cheered. X100. The urge to sing the lion sleeps tonight is just a whim away, a whim away, a whim away. Sultan cheered. Okay, I'm back. X100. 
A ham sandwich with a plan. walks into a bar and orders a beer. The oh, did bartender I says, my water so bottles? Son of a bitch! Here. Where's my water Aha! Alright. We're gonna go to here. Don Mongu's cheer. So I can order X100. dinner. My sister Hello. bet that I've I returned. Build a car out of spaghetti. You should have seen Are y'all being tortured with jokes? Pasta. Yeah, it looks like you're being tortured. <laughs> stop stop the jokes. Please God, stop the jokes. Um alright. Another wretched foul is a thing joins the red host. Where the hell? Oh, there it is. Uh, oh god. Uh, let's see. What looks good around here? Oh my god, it's 840. Holy shit. Okay. I don't have a lot of options. Oh. X100. A blind man walks into a bar and a table and a chair and a bed. Come on, man. Where's the where's the A material? Where's that garbage? Oh, I kind of want. I don't know how I would have that delivered Planetary to me though. X one hundred, high sotech, high chat. This is Lord Croak. The great plan has changed. We must take a sea lane. We must take this sea lane to meet and kill Mazdamundi. Fulfill the Propeci. Chat type a smart. That sounds awfully suspicious. <laughs> that sounds awfully suspicious. He does say, uh... Peasant! Peasant! <laughs> Jason! Jason! Uh... <laughs> I don't know if I could... I guess I have to do delivery. <laughs> Jason, if I order blue goose, would you bring it to me? The underscore <laughs> Would you bring me dinner? Cheered. X100. It's the high quality humor that keeps me here. Oh, salty troll. I, I fear for you then. I, I truly fear for you. Um. Okay. I guess. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Blue goose. Trinkets. Blue goose sounds fine. That sounds good. Cause then I can get like a whole bunch of queso, in case. I want to like munch on something throughout the night. Yes, really? You do that for me? Oh my gosh. Dude, if you'd be willing to do that, I will, I'll tip you like you're a driver. <laughs> I'll give you a tip. This is a great way to celebrate the end of my birthday. If I asked nicely, dude, that would be so nice. Cause then I could just call it in and that would be so much easier for me. Yeah, I promise I'll take you out to dinner. X this week <laughs> and repayment or whatever like blue oh my god no no more jokes i'm gonna increase if y'all quit if y'all don't stop abusing the bit system i'm gonna increase like the minimum for tts <laughs> stop it <laughs> which non-demon would be the scariest to come across as a human the scariest non-demon creature? Uh... Probably like a toad dragon. Toad dragon would probably be the worst case scenario. It's only in ones and I have to throw them at you? Alright, I can do that. Uh, Xara, thanks so much for the prime sub. X100. In terms of lore dump, what are best Warhammer fantasy roleplay books to purchase? Ah... Get the core rule book, and then I would probably recommend. I can't believe I got fired from the calendar factory. All I did was take a day off. <laughs> All right. Any. Okay. From this moment forward, any more puns in the next like until I put a piece of food in my mouth, whoever does a pun next gets thrown in the snake pit. All it, it is it is punishable by snake death now. Um, I would get the core rule book. And then just start collecting the uh, the um, shadows shadows over the empire or whatever the hell it's called series. All right, uh, let me. What do I do with my phone? I just had it. I literally just had it. And then I put on this. God, this thing doesn't have pockets. Holy artist ninety five cheered. X1000, ah. 
Can you tell us a story before dinner about Narkai's battles? Well, I could I could tell you before I eat dinner, but not before I order dinner because I have to order dinner right now. X100 just got back. Hey, the salty troll! Thanks so much for gifting ten subs. Just full of Monty Python references. Another wretched okay. foul uh, thing joins the red host. Cursed Sotex spawn. Here, I need to test something. Guigai cheered. X100. Could you tell us something random from lore about Malice Darkblade? Uh, random lore fact about Malice Darkblade? Odious Spoons cheered. X100. Is Dryka from Aos the same Dryka? It's been a long fantasy? time since I've read the, uh... It's been a long time since I've read the Malice Darkblade series, actually. Um, probably, uh, random lore fact. He went through an amnesia plot once. One of his books has an amnesia plot, which was so anime, it was ridiculous. Like, he loses his memory. Keep up the good work, my dude. Uh, Nubtech, thanks so much for the four months and the nice message. Angron, 1996, thanks so much for the Prime sub. That's a very specific year, but I bet you're excited about that new Angron model. Holy Artist, I will definitely do that uh, before I eat dinner. XRO, thanks so much X100. for the Prime. How long do you have on the stream clock? Uh, Pikachu, you uh, I don't have a stream clock. Uh, <laughs> because I have to leave at a specific time uh, to take my dog to the vet. So I'm going to be going until then, which is like 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we've got like another 14 hours ish. All right. Probably more like 13 hours. Ordering dinner. Oh, I'm going to put this screen back up because I don't want y'all seeing my face while I order this so you don't copy down my number. <laughs> Be right back. Canuckle 87 cheered. X100. What does Mario like to wear for pants? Denim, denim, denim. Into the snake pit I go. Planetary Vision cheered. X100. Going from a 20-hour stream into a vet appointment. Fam, your dog is taking you to the vet at that point. LOL. <laughs> Another wretched foul is a thing. Joins the red host. <laughs> Cursed Sotex spawn. Stopping by before I go to bed to say was up and good luck on the stream before work at 2 a.m. Borg 4494 cheered. X100. What is the background from Blad before he got to Sylvania? Inquisitor Thomas cheered. X100, getting tossed in a pit full of snakes? That's got to bite. Who said that? Who said that? Inquisitor Thomas. Oh, okay, Hawk already got him. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Jason, they said it'll be ready in 10 minutes. Um, if you're cool with picking that up, I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, here, I'll just text you. I'll, I'll text you instead of doing all this shit. Uh, here in a sec. Song of Power cheered. X100. Tell me if you heard this one before. No, 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 there's is no god. The only man in the sky is me. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Power, you all right? Um. Hammond underscore the underscore Australian cheered. X100. Hey, Sotek, 
What was your worst loss ever on tabletop? When and where was it? What could you have done differently? Uh, my worst loss on tabletop. Um, <laughs> no, I actually, I actually know the answer to that. So my worst ever loss on uh, Warhammer Fantasy tabletop was I, I don't remember who I was playing, but I was playing a game where I was, I was playing my Lizardman and I was working on, um, I was, uh, I was working on, uh, um, like I had a big unit. I had what's called a death star. So I had a super big, uh, uh, I had a super big, um, Venator 501 ST cheered, um, X100 horde of temple guard, like a giant time. unit of like, I think 36 temple guard, um, with a slawn mage priest, uh, hiding in the unit. And the goal was to like march the horde of temple guard across the table and use my slawn using life magic to buff the shit out of my temple guard while dwellers blowing any like large groups of enemies to kill them and then using my healing magic and buff magic to make my temple guard like really, really strong and let them just cleave everybody apart. Uh, but turn one, first spell, I'm like, all right, I'm going to six dice to cast this spell and I roll it and I miscast, but I wanted to miscast because I had an item that let me pass a miscast onto an enemy wizard. So long as I rolled a two plus roll a dice, I roll a one and go, oh, Oh no. So I suffer the miscast, but it's like, all right, you know, it's not a big deal. It's whatever. I roll two dice. I get a three. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So because I rolled a three on a miscast, my slawn proceeded to completely and utterly implode. And not only did he die instantly, despite all of his health and defenses, but I also had to put the five inch template centered over him and every single temple guard that was even partially touched by the so template the took a strength 10 hit and died instantly I welcome so the vast majority of all of my uh the vast no. majority of my that death star that cost well over half my army instantly enough. died first magic phase of turn one that game did not go well <laughs> and how could i have won uh you know just don't roll a one <laughs> that that would have saved me You welcome the snake pit. We'll have fun down there. Why are you beard cheered? X2000. Samuel Lays doubted you that Boris would be in this game. He was wrong and I am he. I am finally able to pay back that bet. <laughs> oh, uh, you didn't need to do that. I, please, you you know, please never feel like you have to, <laughs> you have to pay. But hey, it's good you were wrong, right? Because isn't it nice having him? Is there a Warhammer Australia? Uh, Warhammer Australia might exist. It's not really clear. It could potentially be one of the larger isles in the Lost Isles of Elethys, but it also could be a mysterious continent we've never seen called Lumbria. Um, that being said, I honestly suspect that Lumbria is not real and that Lumbria is in fact just Lustria, but by a cartographer who doesn't realize that the world is round. Um, but who knows? Um... Ending's possible, honestly. Just like two Dr. Peppers would be good. Why are you beard cheered? X100. So happy to be wrong. That's not how you spell. If they got some. All right. Don Mongoose cheered. Oh. X300. Money. Bed set. calls. Keep up the amazing stream. See you in six hours. Hey, man. Get some good rest. Only six hours? Oh, dude. I, I, I need, like, way more than that. All right. Let's get back to gameplay and lore questions. Whoops. Uh, could do and 